Good morning. Vascular ultrasound. So this is going to sort of complement what we have uh, done before. Again, we, we, we look at ankle brachial index, which will give us an idea if there is any, any blockage in the, the low extremity um, vessels. We look at a uh, pulse volume recording, which can um, actually localize the area of the blockage. Now, when we do vascular ultrasound, we do both two-dimensional color flow and, uh, and uh, uh, pulse and, 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 and continuous wave Doppler. We can, we can locate the area of uh, the obstruction and we can also give the degree of blockage. Uh, so this is a little bit more specific to, to, to peripheral artery disease. We're also going, we, we, we're going to look at the, the carotid uh, ultrasound. So you have to remember your anatomy, the common carotid is going to divide into your internal carotid artery and your external carotid artery. So this is a, 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 a two-dimensional image of two-dimensional image of your carotid. You can see this is the common carotid and it splits, okay? You have your external and your internal carotid artery. If you look at the, you know, you can see what we call the intimal thickening. And it, it, that's very important uh, for us to, 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 to measure because intimal thickening will give us an idea of atherosclerosis and atherosclerotic burden. So we usually measure what we call the intimal thickening. That is this little thick, uh, thickness right here. Um, so it, it's easy to image the, the, the carotid, okay? So you use your, uh, your transducer and you, you know, go up the neck. So again, the common carotid and it splits so you get an internal and an external. Now, it's important for you to know which is which. Just looking at the, the, the image will not allow you to identify which one is the internal and which one is the external. And again, these vessels do not come labeled, so you have to determine which is which. And um, as the lecture progress, we'll show you how to do that. Um, so after you get your two-dimensional image, you can put color in and you're supposed to get your nice flow, something looking like this. If the blood vessel is normal, you're gonna get your nice laminar flow and you'll see your color looking something like this. Nice, uh, smooth lumen, no evidence of obstruction, no turbulence. And just like you do any other uh, uh, duplex uh, or color imaging, you um, you will see a, a, uh, obstruction is going to present as aliasing, or you're going to get a mosaic of color. Okay, so same type of Doppler that you have uh, you, you're accustomed to. Obstruction or uh, increase flow you're gonna have turbulence. So when you get your nice flow like this, then uh, there's no obstruction. Again, when you do your, the, 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 the carotid ultrasound, you get your common carotid, and then it splits your internal and external, and then your, your, your veins are gonna, this is the internal jugular vein, which is on top. One way, it's the, the, the veins, the walls of the vein tend to be thin and um, the veins do not uh, pulsate like the arteries. So just looking at it, you can determine which is which. And then when you put your, your color in and Doppler, you can uh, distinguish the, the, the veins from the artery. All right, again, Sometimes you want to measure your intimal thickening, 
Um, so you see your intimal layer and you just measure it. It's a, you know, you want to measure the, 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 the diameter of the intimal thickening. Again, intimal thickening will give you an indication of the atherosclerotic burden. So it's important to do. All right, so again, this is looking at your carotid artery and two-dimensional image. And when you look at the wall, if you measure this intimal thickening, you can see that this intimal thickening is increased. And not only that, but there is a plaque burden right here. So there is a plaque, okay? So there is a, there is a plaque there. So you can characterize this plaque, you know, uh, soft plaque, uh, you know, etc., and uh, you can measure the degree of obstruction. Okay, you can, uh, and we'll show you how to do that as well. Now, if if there is a if there is an obstruction in the vessel, and you put you turn your color on, again your common carotid, and the the, uh, the the common carotid splits, and you have an internal and external. When you turn your color on, you can see that there is a mosaic of colors, suggesting that there is an obstruction right there. Okay, so you can see aliasing. Okay, and again here you can see you have some aliasing right there. So there is obstruction there. The next thing is to determine the degree of obstruction. Okay, if you look here again, you can see nice color right there. And then once you, you get here, there is aliasing, okay, suggesting that there is turbulence, increased flow. And remember, when, when, when we talk about obstruction in the vascular system, think in terms of a hose and you have a nozzle on the hose. And if you turn the nozzle to a very small opening, the, 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 the water will go, at a, will go a, a, a further distance. That is, the velocity is going to increase. So similar, similar to when you have an obstruction in the vascular system, the greater the obstruction, the greater the velocity. Just like you have your water hose, if you decrease the opening in the, 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 in the nozzle of the hose, the water will travel uh, further because of greater velocity. Same thing. So if you have an obstruction right here, you get uh, turbulence, okay? You get increased velocity. So the next thing to do is to look at your Doppler because you can use Doppler to determine the degree of uh, stenosis then. And when we do Doppler, when we look at uh, the, the, the arteries, we have what you call uh, peripheral arteries and central arteries. And the, the Doppler signal is going to be different. When we talk about central arteries, that is the, 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 the arteries that go to the brain, okay? You, you, you have what we call... It, it, you have a systolic component and a diastolic component. So again, just like we do any, any uh, ultrasound uh, technique, you need to do, you need to have your, your ECG. Remember, it's, uh, it's gated, so you're gonna have systole and diastole. With your central arteries, that's the arteries going to the brain, you, you'll have a prominent systolic and a diastolic component. Okay, and we'll show you the difference when when you when we talk about a pure peripheral artery. You know, it, you, you you don't have a, a diastolic component, and the, the 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 waveform is triphasic. So this is, if you want to call it biphasic, you have a systolic and a diastolic component. The diastolic component don't go to zero. Okay, so this would be. Uh, a Doppler signal of the internal carotid artery, okay? We have your systolic component and your diastolic component. When you have an obstruction in, in the internal carotid artery, again, 
just like your, your, your hose with a nozzle, the velocity is going to increase. So if you measure this systolic velocity, it's going to be very high. And if you measure the diastolic velocity, it's also going to be increased. So if you look over here, you can see that your systolic velocity is 736 centimeters per second. And then the diastolic velocity is 264 centimeters per second. So obstruction in the vascular system, you're going to get increased velocity. Just like your, 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 your hose with a nozzle, okay? When you narrow the, the opening in the nozzle, this, the velocity of the, the water increase. Of course, when you have total occlusion, then you're not going to get any flow at all. Okay? So you have turbulence. So the first thing to do is do your two-dimensional uh, ultrasound. Look at the vessel. If you see... Well, the next thing after that is to put your color on, and the color will allow you to determine if there's turbulence. And then, you know, when you're two-dimensional echo, you can also see evidence of a plaque. Then you do your, your Doppler to determine the velocity, okay? All right, so this is another uh, obstruction in the internal carotid artery. You have the systolic component and the diastolic component. Okay, um, so you the, this is in this is in um, uh, so this is in meters per second. So we usually use uh, centimeters per second. Okay, so you can quickly convert this to centimeters per second. Just multiply it by a hundred. Okay, and you can determine the the systolic velocity, or what we call, usually call the peak systolic velocity, and the diastolic, uh, the end diastolic velocity. Okay, you just measure it. So this this is just a simple Doppler. Again, you put your color on, you get some aliasing right there. You can see that there are some plaques there, and you put your Doppler, you get a systolic peak systolic uh, velocity and your end diastolic uh, velocity. So in this case, the peak systolic velocity is 479.6 centimeters per second. And then the end diastolic velocity is 151.7. You know, simple das, uh, Doppler technique. When we, when we determine degree of obstruction or degree of stenosis, so this is your common carotid, and the common carotid is going to split to give you an internal carotid artery and an external. Usually, the, 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 the external carotid artery is going to have branches uh, in the, the, the head and neck, so in the, in the face, okay? So the internal, sorry, the external carotid artery is going to give you branches in the, in the face, whereas the internal carotid artery is not going to branch until it gets into the, the brain, okay? This is your internal carotid artery. If there is an obstruction right here, so, you know, a plaque with an obstruction, you can determine the degree of narrowing. And then you compare it to the normal portion of the internal carotid artery. To get the degree or the percentage of stenosis where the internal carotid artery is, is normal, we call that Y, so it will be Y minus X divided by Y times 100, and that will give you the percentage stenosis. Again, if you have the stenosis in this area of the, the internal carotid artery, you can determine the percentage of stenosis. Just find the normal portion, subtract the stenotic area of, uh, portion from that, and then divide it by the normal portion times 100. So that will give you an idea of the percentage stenosis. Now we have criteria to determine uh, uh, the, 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 the percentage or the degree of stenosis. And one of them is the so-called NASET uh, criteria, the consens consensus criteria. Okay? Um, with the consensus criteria, we look at the peak systolic velocity, the end diastolic velocity, and then the ratio of the peak 
systolic velocity in the internal carotid artery compared to the common carotid artery. So when you do your Doppler, a normal internal carotid artery is going to have a peak systolic velocity less than 120 centimeters per second. And then the, the end diastolic uh, velocity usually less than 40. And then when you do your ratio of your internal carotid artery to the common carotid artery, it's less than two. For a less than 50% stenosis, the, your peak systolic velocity in the internal carotid artery is less than 120 centimeters per second. The uh, end diastolic velocity less than 40 and your ratio is less than two, okay? For a 50 to 69% stenosis, your peak systolic velocity in turner carotid artery is between 125 and 230. Your end diastolic velocity is between 40 and 100. And then your ratio of, of the velocity of the, in the internal carotid to the common carotid is between two and four, okay? So, that will give you a stenosis between 50 and 69 percent. For a stenosis greater than 70 percent, the peak systolic velocity in the internal carotid artery is usually greater than 230. And when you look at the, the end diastolic velocity, it's usually greater than 100. And the ratio of the peak systolic velocity in the internal carotid artery to the common carotid artery is usually greater than 4. And we usually don't intervene until the stenosis is greater than 70%. So this number is very important, okay? Peak systolic velocity greater than 230, end diastolic velocity greater than 100, and then the ratio of the peak systolic velocity in the internal carotid artery to the common carotid artery greater than four suggests the stenosis greater than 70%. Of course, when you have total occlusion, you're not going to get any flow, or you're not going to get any flow. So the, 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 the velocity and everything is, is close to zero, or very, very low. Okay? So this is the, the NASA criteria. There are other criteria. And, uh, you know, so if you use the NASA or the consensus criteria, you know, these are numbers. And the, 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 the criteria are, are very, uh, very similar. So the, you know, no one and uh, use that one uh, as a recommendation. So when, when, you, when you look at the carotid artery, you're going to determine um, the stenosis. Usually, you know, you, you, we, you, you talk about the, the the stenosis, the reduction in diameter area, and I showed you how to do that, you know, using the normal uh, uh, portion of the vessels. Uh, you're going to compare the, the, the stenotic portion of the vessel. So you determine uh, the, the, the reduction in the diameter. And then when you look at uh, carotid artery occlusion for, you know, when, when a vessel is completely blocked off, you're not going to, no flow is detected. So you're not going to get any color. You're not going to get any pulse wave uh, Doppler. You can also, when you look at the, 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 the area of narrowing, you can determine, is this a thrombus? Is it plaque? Uh, so you can look at the, 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 the narrowing and determine whether it's, uh, thrombus, blood clot, or plaques. Uh, you can see if there are reversal of flow uh, proximal to the occluded segment. You can also characterize the plaques, you know, soft plaque, etc. And uh, you can then, we, we showed you just before, you can use whichever criteria uh, to determine the degree of uh, stenosis. So when you do the ultrasound in the carotid and you come to the bifurcation, so you're in a common carotid and you come to the bifurcation, sometimes it's difficult to determine which one is the internal carotid artery and which one is the external carotid artery. One way to do that is what we call the, um, the, 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 the carotid uh, 
tap or tapping off the, the, the temporal tap. Okay, so you just tap the temporal area. And because the internal carotid artery it goes into the brain, it's you're not it's you're not gonna affect the 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 internal carotid artery by tapping the temporal area. Uh, we call it so-called temporal tap tapping. You you gonna affect the external carotid artery because this blood vessel uh, give branches to to the to the to the to the to the, to the face. So by tapping the temporal area, you get these small regular deflection there, telling you that this is the external carotid artery, not the internal. Also, the external carotid artery is is not a, 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 a central artery, and the waveform is different. It is triphasic as opposed to just biphasic as the the, the internal carotid artery yes but again sometimes it's difficult to to distinguish them so by doing the temporal tapping and you see these small regular deflection you know it's the external carotid artery again the external carotid artery and other arteries are peripheral real peripheral arteries and you get a triphasic so you get your 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 systolic component. Then you get your reversal, and then uh, uh, your diastolic component is, is up. So it's triphasic. This triphasic pattern or waveform suggests a peripheral artery, not a central artery. With the central artery, as I showed you, you're going to have a diastolic component. There is a diastolic component. You don't have this triphasic uh, waveform. So you're going to have with 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 the peripheral artery and your superficial femoral artery of course that's a peripheral artery also your external carotid artery it's not a peripheral artery so you get it's going to have a triphasic waveform where you have the sharp ups, upstroke with increased peak velocity and then you have the, the flow reversal okay so if you have a stenosis in the superficial femoral artery You'll get increase in velocity, but it's gonna you're gonna have your triphasic, or sometimes it, it can become biphasic when you have the obstruction. Uh, typical triphasic uh, uh, waveform. Uh, so this this is looking at um, the common femoral artery. So there is a you can see the aliasing. So again, you're supposed to get nice laminar flow just a single color, but you get a mosaic of color right here, suggesting that there is an obstruction. And then when you do your, your Doppler, you get increased velocity, okay? You know it's a peripheral artery because you get a, a, a it's triphasic, okay? So when we do ultrasound other than in the neck vessels we usually there you know we look at the abdominal aorta so you can do ultrasound of the abdominal aorta another common artery is the renal artery because you can get what we call renal artery stenosis and then you can look at the the the, the vessels in the leg you know so you remembering your your vascular anatomy is important you know you can look at your the, the, the common iliacs, you can look at your, uh, uh, inter your external iliac, you can look at the common femoral, you can look at the superficial femoral, the deep femoral, and then in the popliteal uh, system. So you can look at all those uh, arterial bed. Looking at the, the, the renal artery, you do the same thing, you, you know, you, you, you'll do your two-dimensional echo looking at the vessel you put your color in and then you'll do your doppler the criteria for renal artery stenosis when you do your your velocity using doppler uh, if your uh, systolic velocity is greater than 200 centimeters per second 
that indicate that you, you will have a, 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 a renal artery stenosis greater than 60%, obstruction greater than 60%. And then what we call a post-stenotic turbulence, just so after the, the area of stenosis, you're gonna have turbulence, uh, you know, mosaic or color, that type of thing. And then brew is seen in the color Doppler. The, the renal artery, uh, what we call, we, we calculate what you call the RAR, okay? The RAR, that is calculated using the peak systolic velocity in the renal artery. Uh, and you're gonna uh, divide that by the, um, the, the peak uh, velocity in the normal aorta, okay? So what you do, you do your Doppler in the renal artery and you get your peak systolic velocity. Then you do your Doppler in the normal aorta and you're gonna get that peak systolic velocity. So the peak uh, systolic velocity in the renal artery divided by the, the peak systolic velocity in the normal aorta. That's what we call the RAR. And if that's greater than 3.5, then it suggests you have a stenosis greater than 60%. All right? Or if you're just gonna use just a peak systolic velocity in the renal artery, and greater than 200 centimeters per second suggests you have a significant stenosis. So this is the criteria that we use. So the, the, the peak systolic velocity in the renal artery should be less than 180 centimeters per second. And when you do your RAR, which is the renal artery ratio, it should be less than 3.5. So the renal artery ratio, RAR, uh, you're gonna get your peak, peak systolic velocity in the renal artery divided by the peak, peak systolic velocity in the normal aorta. And that should be less than 3.5. For a, a renal artery stenosis, that's less than 60%. The peak systolic velocity in the renal artery uh, greater than or equal to 180 centimeters per second. But when you do your RAR, it's less than 3.5. For a stenosis that's greater than or equal to 60% in the renal artery, your peak systolic velocity usually greater than 180 centimeters per second, then your RAR renal artery, uh, renal aortic uh, ratio uh, is greater than or equal to 3.5. Again, the RAR, or renal artery ratio, is calculated using the peak systolic velocity in the renal artery divided by the, the peak systolic velocity in the normal aorta, okay? If there is total occlusion, you're, you're gonna get no flow, so no signal at all, okay? So the, all you do when you're doing any arterial system, you do your two-dimensional ultrasound first, you put your color in, and then you go on to the Doppler to determine if there is significant obstruction. Renal artery stenosis is uh, one of those conditions that can give rise to uh, refractory hypertension, blood pressure that is difficult to control. Um, and so if you have a patient like that, you can do your, your renal artery vascular, renal artery studies, uh, do your, 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 your assessment to see if there's renal artery stenosis. And if your refractory hypertension is secondary to renal artery stenosis, greater than or equal to 60%, you can either balloon, you can dilate the vessel using balloon, or you can put a stent in, okay? All right, so we are gonna stop here. Um, you know, uh, so that that give you a basic understanding of 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 a, a peripheral artery ultrasound, uh, vascular ultrasound. Um,